You'll find these interesting. These are uh, a pair of um, British Army infrared night vision goggles, or binoculars, probably the more accurate description. They fit on this uh, turtle shell helmet, and uh, as you can see, they, they bear a twin binocular infrared unit on the front there, which is held on by some spring clips, and um, they work very well. You can stomp quite happily around a farm wearing these, because they have the distinct advantage of uh, they don't intensify the image. <clears throat> they uh, just convert invisible light to visible light via those two uh, uh, binoculars there. And the advantage in using a twin system is that you uh, can you still retain stereo viewing, which for a driver is essential because obviously you need to have some spatial awareness. And um, they work, you know, compared to these, you know, considering they're probably 40 years old, they work very well. They look a little bit archaic in their design because if you just if I could put them down there. <clears throat> On the front you have like what's a, a table lamp sort of arrangement, a bit like the old Agapoise lamp, whereas you just twist it up and the binocular comes up away from the face, uh, like that. And, uh, as I say, looks a bit Heath Robinson, but uh, inside there you have two image converter tubes. Two high tension leads come through the strap, the top of the helmet, and they go into this, uh, at the back you have like a sturdy high tension unit which houses the battery and a single transistor which steps up the voltage and via that elasticated strap at the top of the helmet uh, clips onto the back of the helmet each side and it gives you a balanced unit as I say they do they do work really well they don't intensify the image so they um, just convert infrared to visible light and uh, because they do that you don't get no noise uh, let me show you let me show you the converter tubes and what I'm going to use later to illuminate a room I think you'll find it really interesting as I say they're <laughs> they're really really sort of Heath Robinson in construction but with those high tension leads going in there but um, they do work just let me show you just bear with me. There we are. He's mounted on that turtle shell helmet there, which dates from uh, probably about 1973. Very clever design, actually. Uh, just going to show you that inside the uh, the objective lens there, and behind the eyepieces, sits this. Um, as you can see, it's all taken up by this image converter tube here. This is um, one of mine, one of a pair which I took from a infrared periscope years ago, and um, CV6099. They're exactly the same as what goes in. They're the same era, and I think these image converter tubes, because they were so good, they were used in uh, pretty well every piece of infrared sort of equipment for donkeys years because they are. Uh, for their size, as you see, there's a they have about a one inch uh, photocathode, one inch screen, so you have good quality image, which I will just demonstrate shortly. So it's a very sort of Heath Robinson sort of contraption there with the with that arrangement, but as you can see, <coughs> the objective lens. The advantage is with these, the uh, because the lenses are not so big, uh, with a view to keep the weight down, you don't get no burns on the tubes. I mean, with these, with these um, periscope, X periscope image converter tubes, these have got uh, minor burns on because uh, the lens was so much faster, and obviously concentrated the light down and just probably ruined the tubes. But uh, these are still in excellent condition. The only weakness in this design is the the HT leads there. They have probably a tendency to pull away from the uh, connectors, but um, mean piece of kit, as you, I think you would agree. Looks like something from Star Wars, don't they? Say the HT unit at the back's got a very sturdy 
sturdy switch there. I won't do that because it'll overexpose the tubes and um, it takes a 1.3 D types uh, to C type cell and uh, works incredibly well with the elasticated strap there contains uh, uh, just stretches across and fits on top of the helmet and it's clipped either side <clears throat> Tonight I'm going to fill a room using these. This is available from Maplins. It's just like a load of diodes that you can actually solder together. They will fill a room, they will flood a room with infrared light and it'll be pretty well, these are pretty well invisible because there's no, you don't use no lenses to focus the energy. You just basically take the room, plonk them on a table, and those dyes will literally be a floodlight. Excellent bit of kit. And um, if you're going to stop around a farm, you just simply use a an LED flashlight, which, uh, believe me, does the business. These are much better than image intensifiers in that you can use them as pitch darkness. So don't get too sniffy about them. You know, they're not something out of a some sort of historical movie, they, these things do work and you, um, if they're on a moonless night starless night when it's overcast and you can't see more than 50 meters in any direction you switch on these babies and they will enable you to stomp around a farm and I've done it and, it's, and it is amazing oh yeah, this is another eBay purchase so well pleased with them I'm going to demonstrate them for you I think you get the general idea on how good these infrared night goggles can work. I've got the kitchen blacked out and I've got an infrared um, lamp set up in there. As you can see, I can have a walk around, but it's pitch dark outside. Just going to show you out the window there, look, absolutely black. But I've got an infrared LED system set up in the kitchen and I'm absolutely flooding it with infrared light. And uh, although I'm not using an intensification process here, I think you'll agree that the actual optical quality is well up there. You can actually make uh, everything in this kitchen. It's pitch dark. You know, I hope you found this uh, video interesting. These goggles were made in about, I think, 69, 1970. Uh, 